Welcome to round number one. Uh, our opener here has a little bit of awkward mana, though it can cast all of our spells currently. Hmm. I think I'm going to try it on the draw here. Like, certainly if our opponent is a deck that we're interested in disrupting, Thalia plus multiple meddling mages will be particularly good, and we won't have to worry about uh, our mana base really giving us any trouble in that instance. Obviously, that we can draw a variety of things that we'll be unable to cast entirely. Um, Mantis Riders, uh, until we have a third land that, that taps for uh, red, one of our Utopia lands. Casting Malcontents, same thing. Um, our freebooters, stuff like that. Let's see what our opponent has for us here. Urza's Tower. All right. A deck we are likely interested in disrupting then in that case, assuming uh, assuming they're not Eldrazi Tron. If they are Eldrazi Tron, we're a little bit less interested in stuff like Thalia. Um, we'll see, though. On the draw here, though, we are going to be in a little bit of a weird spot where... We can't really meddling mage enough of the threats before they're going to be able to come down. Assuming my opponent has the additional Tron land. Um, we could play Thalia first, but that doesn't stop them, obviously, from like having Worm Coil. Uh, it stops them from playing Karn. Uh, but we could just meddling mage name Karn as well. I think I'm actually not that worried about Worm Coil. I could stall out against it with multiple Phantasmal Images, but we'll see here. All right, opponent's just going for it. Um, awkward timing for Aether Vial. I think I'm just going to save this Meddling Mage. And just play Thalia. I'd rather not mentally mage name Karn. I'd rather name something else. Um, since there's a lot of board states where Karn doesn't really matter. And the Thalia can sort of postpone that. Again, if my opponent does have Worm Coil, they can just go ahead and slam that. If they have O Stone, they can go ahead and play it. Obviously, they won't be able to pop it uh, on top of that, but they could certainly play it. Looks like a Worm Coil. All right, well... We're also going to have a worm coil, at least one. <laughs> we'll see. Another vial is not great. This is certainly not the kind of game we'd prefer to be in with with Tron, obviously, um, since they do have a lot of the late game threats and we do not, but in the meantime, it's nice that, uh, <laughs> with the, with the illusion worm coil, our opponent can't carn it, so even if they have, like, another land carn, it doesn't deal with it. Um, the downside to it is if they have Ugin, Ugin Plus does, but, um, Ugin's going to be good against us regardless, so. But if they try to card minus it, of course, instead of getting exiled, it'll just shatter into the uh, two worm tokens, which is nice. All right, opponent has to pay two for a sphere. It's kind of sweet for us. 
black. Are they just going to fatal push the swarm coil? That'd be kind of sad. Sure. It's funny since I have another illusion, like I really don't want my opponent to attack this turn. Um, but it wouldn't be that strange for them to want to hold it back either. Not want to trade for the death touch worm. If they do attack, I will just take it. I think I'll be pretty contented with that. I even actually get to get in some damage that way, right? We get to bash um, for 9, right? So they go down to 16 after that. Oh no, more things. Also the O-Stone. Yeah, that's rough. That would almost certainly indicate that my opponent's not interested in attacking. This is a weird spot. Um, where like if I illusion first, I guess my opponent still wouldn't block if I illusion first. So I probably should just do that just in case. I'm going to lose this clue though. So sad. Yeah, definitely still human. We don't want to name illusion here. We do have a lot of blue sources, but uh, not not any of our multicolored sources for humans. So there's no way we'd need name illusion on any of these. This game with two secret coasts. Even if we drew a bun bunch more Utopia lands here. That's unfortunate. It's probably Karn. No. Do we have another fatal push? That would be also not good. Oh no. Oh no. My my plan. Oh, maybe not. Is this Ugin? That would be worse, I guess. Karn, okay. Well, this is going to be interesting. Plus. Hmm. Even more interesting. I don't know how I'm going to break through. I don't think I'm going to be able to play any of these into this O-Stone either. I guess I really just need to draw a Reflector Mage. So, let's pop this. Okay, opponent likely planning on minus targeting worm coil into pop oblivion stone, but that would obviously blow up their Karn too, so maybe not. Maybe they just want to plus this into oblivion. Man, combat this turn is really tough. Um, there's even an argument for like ship everything like they could eat this go to 22 and I'm still getting in for 13 so I could even ship everything at Karn that seems kind of weird because then they just like probably trade here bash back and then pop this Karn dies or Karn wouldn't die yeah, Karn would even go to 1 not that that really matters since they'd be pretty heavily incentivized to pop this. Um, and probably wouldn't, yeah, just definitely wouldn't have time to put a fake counter on it.
Could ship all of this, every non warm coil thing at Karn. They eat this, go to 22. Karn eats six damage, doesn't really change anything. Uh, obviously, just this attack is safe if I just wanted to chip in for three or chip at Karn for three. But if I give my opponent too much time with this O stone, then they might be able to fake counter this Karn. And I kind of need to get through it. I think I ship everything at them. Twenty-two. Yeah, I mean, I only like actually get in for six, putting them into ten, but assuming they block here. Uh, if they trade here, we get in for only three. But again, I think we need to incentivize this O stone pop so that Karn will die. All right. All right, so now I basically got in for nothing because they get to crack back. But I did gain three life and lose a guy. <laughs> but if they crack back, like, okay, sure. So maybe now they, maybe now they minus pop. Yeah. So the bad news is they get to keep two tokens. The good news is we killed Karn. Um, yeah. I guess they could have had, like, additional O stone. Do they have enough mana? Uh, without that land, they were short, but they might have had it. They probably drew it off the relic, but they might have had it already. I mean, they're short now that they've spent mana, but... Jeez. Interesting. It's just kind of letting them have... Um, their permanence for like an additional turn cycle. Which is obviously great for them. Man, just being on the back foot this whole game and never being able to meddling mage made this kind of weird. Uh, obviously, I can malcontents for a lava spike here. Three, six, eight, nine. I, this is sort of a lava spike as well, um, but a little bit more reliable of one. So I probably won't want to fire that off as much as I would for the, with this. Um, so obviously we can get in for 12. I wonder if I actually... No, they have this. That's just kind of pointless. I was going to say I could like possibly dome them and then try to kill them with these. But that, that doesn't make any sense. So I just get to gain a million. I probably just... Kill the Ugin. And then either play nothing or Lava Spike them. I mean, I guess, I guess let's start with kill the Ugin. Yeah, I mean, this line from my opponent is just basically buying them more time. Um... Maybe I play something middling here. It feels wise to sandbag a lot of this. Um, since the O-Stone pop is like getting closer and closer to force and I have a lot of work to do post O-Stone. I think it's fine to spike my opponent here. Actually get to use my mana and still do something that matters post O-Stone. No, whoops, almost, almost clicked yes. Do not want that. I 
What a weird game this has been. I don't think I possibly could have, like, Metal Image named Warm Coil, just since there's a bunch of other bad things that can happen on, on that turn, plus I have the multiple illusions, but obviously, like, the multiple illusion plan is pretty ambitious, right, because it gets us to this, like, long game with Tron, where they've had Tron the whole game. Wow. Do they have the other O-Stone? Yeah, that's super good. That stinks. That's going to make this somewhere between tough and impossible. Hopefully we can hit that land um, so that I can go Noble Hierarch Mantis Rider. Hit the Karn for four so that if they minus Karn, it's dead. If I don't do that... Oh, right. They still get to minus Karn. For some reason, I thought they had already used Karn. All right, well, that was still a good draw. Pretty sure I just have to do this. Opponent is finally out of cards, so no more large terrifying things for now. But we still don't really have a way out of this. I mean, I give Karn this Aether Vial. He's at five. Like I'm not I'm not increasing my clock against Karn quickly at all, plus I have these uh worms to worry about in the meantime that are just gonna be chipping away at me. While my opponent gains back a bunch of life. So I don't I don't really foresee this game going in my favor. Kinda just needed a meta or excuse me, a reflector mage um during that mid game. Obviously we are on less reflector mages. Which uh, did not help us here in this particular game. Still in trying for Sanctum of Ugin. Play Sanctum. Oh no, we draw a threat too. That would be that would be reasonably disastrous. Would not be coming back from that. All right, just a sphere for now. Cycle. Karn plus. Oh no. Jeez. Alright. We can't win from Karn Ulamog or Karn, even Karn Warncoil if they for whatever reason didn't have any Ulamog, but we'll, uh, we'll pack it in. That was already going to be tough enough as it was. So maybe we want this additional Reflector Mage, but I think two is actually the right number in a lot of cases. Like, you really, like, yeah, we really wanted one that game, but it's easy to flood on this effect and have it actually just be doing nothing. Um, so we might not want this. Renegades are okay. Um, they sound nice, right, in principle, but then there's some games where you really just don't have a target for a long time, uh, except your own Vile, um, which is obviously not something you're super excited about blowing up. Freebooter, definitely I want. Uh, Necromancer certainly serves a purpose. I don't really like Collector, Crusader, Graph Digger's Cage, Dismember. I do want the Meddling Mage and don't want the Static Casters. As far as things from our main that we do not want, there's really not a ton. I'm super interested in changing. These Thalias are, are weird because there's going to be some games like that where they just totally don't matter. Uh, on the play, they're a little bit more likely to make the difference. Um, not sure how often I'm going to want to cut these Thraben Inspectors. Like, this definitely seems like a matchup where those are not going to be good. I just don't really have time to screw around with that. Um, maybe those are something I want to cut. Like I said, I think these are definites. This is probably not, and these are maybes. So we'll start with that. Definitely want all of these. I definitely want all of these. So at that point, it would be like, do I want to cut some number of these or some number of these for any number of renegades? 
I mean, like, there's some games where you just, like, get to blow up an early or, like, weird mid-game O-stone, and obviously that makes a huge difference. I think more often than not, you're that's obviously not going to happen very often, uh, and more often than not, you're just trying to prevent those things from coming down with, with mentally imaged freebooters. Um, that said, maybe I'll play one. Got a three to four. It. I think I'll leave the Thalias. I mean, they can make a big difference against like plays that involve like stars and uh, Sylvan scryings. So we'll be more excited about them on the play. Maybe uh, if we go to a game three, maybe we'll be a little bit less interested in them. Um, this hand's tough because I only have freebooters interaction and I have absolutely no acceleration, but uh, I do have a lot of freebooters if I want to, which can make a huge difference on the play. Right? I mean. At that point, my only my opponent's only taking one thing. Again, this hand's soft to worm coil. Another hand that's soft to worm coil, like natural drawn worm coil. Uh, we do have multiple images again, if that's the case. Um, Zathra Necromancer helps us protect us a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm interested. Uh, this is a game where we need to potentially consider naming illusion depending on our, how our draw steps go. Now, naming illusion on an early land makes it uh, very difficult to cast a Mantis Rider in that particular game. So I, I want to sort of do that as a last resort in this style of game, um, but we'll, we'll see. Obviously, with two Phantasmal Images and no Mantis Rider, um, the images are my priority, but... I want to be able to draw Mantis Riders and cast them later. All right, well, there's one right now. So we already have to make the decision and it already got tougher. Um, the problem is that once I name Illusion, this is just gonna be a nightmare. Uh, if I name human, it's possible that these aren't a nightmare, but I have to draw a land that casts them, which doesn't include the four horizon canopies. Um, so basically any of the remaining 10 utopia lands or the two secret coasts. So that puts me on 12 draws to cast image. I mean, noble hierarch sort of, um, if only we could see their hand first before making this decision. I think I'm going to need to name Illusion. I can still put a lot of pressure on if I don't need to multiple Freebooter. Then I can just like Thalia's Lieutenant into multiple Thalia's Lieutenants. Um, if it's like my opponent's hand is not that exciting and I just need to close the game out. So, uh, whoa. <laughs> I was going to say, so I need to name Illusion. I almost clicked Human, but we'll go with that. It's a little tough. Like I said, this Manus Rider is like, we're going to have to have at least four mana to be able to cast it. And even then it's possible we couldn't depending on the lands that we find after this, but we're going to free boot and see what our opponent has. All right. Sphere stone scrying Ulamog. So I'm probably just going to take their scrying um worry about the stone later yeah it is likely that i'm going to have to copy freebooter though my cracks for a black they just immediately draw fatal push or are they just hoping to draw fatal push hard to know if they immediately drew fatal push that would be pretty bad for me <laughs> All things considered. Hmm. Okay, so they waited on this. Man, if they did draw Fatal Push and I go for Image, one of the, and they're one of their two mystery cards or the top card of their library is Fatal Push, we obviously get just insanely blown out. But there's a possibility that my opponent saving this means they have uh, Sylvan Scrying like, as a draw. That's not terribly likely, though. They probably just figured they should, they, they're should they better off saving it at this point. Um, but they also have the O-Stone. I think, I guess, I guess I bash first. Uh, 
We've been drawing these Aether Vials in this match at a uh, not, not wonderful turn. All right, let's let's go for oh, missed missed blue there. Not a black illusion. Go for this. Maybe we get blown out. We'll see. No opponents F6. Okay. All right. So they have Karn, Ulamog, O Stone, Power Plant. Oh, they just drew. <laughs> they drew the Tron Land. All right. Well, that's that's pretty bad for me. My opponent drew the Tron Land and another threat. So now they have three threats and Tron. <laughs> um, so what are we gonna be able to take here? Obviously, they have duplicates of that. Okay. Um. I mean, if my opponent plays Karn minuses on this, and I draw a land, I kill the Karn. Then they get their O stone back though when they minus. It's like I, I might as well make them O stone me and hope to play this instead. Like either way I'm hoping for a three drop. Get their silver screen back. I guess that matters too, since then they also have this Ulamog. This is just gonna be a tough game. It's gonna be a real tough game. I guess uh yeah, I guess it's gonna be Karn here. At least try to make their mana a little awkward. Drew another star. Probably make green with that one, yeah. Just put it down to six mana. Yeah, they just play the stone. So they have Ulamog, Mystery, Mystery. We missed on the land. Guess I am in a lot of trouble then. It's like this is a shock. Nothing else could possibly matter, so I either do nothing or I shock my opponent. Guess that means I do nothing. Problem with doing nothing is my if my opponent draws another threat, or even the tower for the Sulamog. I guess if they draw the tower for the Sulamog, it just doesn't matter. Which does mean I need to close this game out quickly. I mean, I could Phantasmal Image their Ulamog, but... I'm not going to win that battle. Especially not when they'll get their Karn back. Alright, I found a different land. So if I play Necromancer, they'll pop it in response. Um, might as well attack first to get some damage in, since if I like do anything else, they'll just... Pop in response, and maybe this way I get in for two. Not that that's very likely to matter. So the only play I can make here that doesn't just get eaten by that Oblivion Stone would be this. So go ahead and play that. Again, unfortunate that we didn't draw the land last turn since we sort of set it up this way, but such is life. Opponent pops their O-Stone now, gets these two back, so now they're on these three plus two mystery cards.
Bona not sure if they want this Seth or Necromancer to resolve. Who knows what could happen? All right. Hits the table. Powerful stuff. So my opponent draws any land in their entire deck, they can Ulamog me. If only they didn't also have this Karn. Maybe I could do something weird and win this game, but... All right, we're just eating the lands. Sure. Human... I'm going to have an Ulamog now. Oops. Tap that for human. Unfortunately, with Karn, I don't see this be a particularly resilient Ulamog. It's a little bit of a fragile Ulamog anyway, but even, even Fatal Push would take it down. Sure, why not? Why not? Incarn something else this way. All right. Well, I don't realistically see. I guess I haven't for a little while, but there's there's no way we're getting getting back in this one. So I'll just go ahead and pack it in, and we'll move on to the next round. See you in just a minute.